This weekend in crypto was absolutely insane. And I think the term insane is an understatement. So yesterday on Halloween, we celebrated the 13th anniversary of the Bitcoin white paper. Thank you, Satoshi. We also saw the highest Bitcoin monthly candle close in history. It is rumored that a meme coin is going to be accepted at a very, very well-known and popular car dealership, car company. And of course, there were so many different rug pulls that happened over this weekend. I can't even keep track. Stay with me, guys. I'm going to put you on game to everything that happened. <laughs> This first story is a little bit weird, but cool at the same time. I don't know. I just still think Elon Musk is a master troll. So leak system code imply trillion dollar Tesla may be looking to accept Shiba Inu payments. Down over here, it shows the code or function over here for all you guys tech savvy people. Um, so it says Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Shiba, check, China POS, credit card, e-check. So basically they're stating that they think Tesla may start accepting Shiba Inu. However, I don't know if I necessarily agree with this or if this is just Elon Musk trolling everybody because we all know that he is working on Dogecoin and he's got a fat bag of it and he is the master troll likes to mess with us. Either way, let's go ahead and take a look at Shiba Inu price because I know a lot of you guys are very excited about it. And I guess I do have an eensy teensy tiny small moon bag. All right, this is the Shiba Inu daily chart and I can't even believe I'm charting this. Oh, well, so it looks like we actually bottomed out on the EMA nine at approximately six zero seven eight zero zero. And we've got our indicators that are just not showing a whole lot of confluence, which it's okay, it is a daily chart. But I do like the fact that we did balance perfectly on the EMA nine, utilizing it as support and we are upward. This is actually a very, very, very bullish setup when we're looking at EMAs. And also the fact too, that we are no longer pinching the Bollinger Band. We bounced perfectly to the EMA nine and we popped back up. Now, taking a look at the 12 hour chart, 12 hour chart is actually looking pretty decent. And personally, just as long as we stay above the EMA 21 on the 12 hour between the EMA 9 21 at approximately um, 665 to about um, 570, I think we're okay. And we will probably smash all time high this week, just as long as Bitcoin decides to behave itself. But at the same time, you guys also have to understand Shiba Inu is a meme coin. The community loves it and they are not selling. As always, make sure to take your profit and have fun with this one. This is the Bitcoin monthly chart, which we didn't cover yesterday because the candle didn't close, but we had an opening here at 43.8, a close here at 61.5, and a swing wick high at about $67,000 which is amazing. This is a beautiful candle here. Absolutely beautiful. But again, just because we have a beautiful green candle doesn't mean we're going to be bullish this entire month. Let's go ahead and take a look at the daily 12 hour and some other timeframes and see what we can expect this week. This is our Bitcoin monthly chart. Last month in October, we had a candle opening at approximately 43.5, and we had a candle close at 61.4 with a swing wick high at approximately 66, $67,000. The previous all time monthly candle close high was at about 58.8 and we surpass that, which is amazing. This green candle on the Bitcoin monthly is outstanding. However, there are some things I don't like on the lower timeframes. If we take a look at our weekly chart, I don't like these swing wick highs. I don't like them because to me, it's telling me the buyers and sellers cannot decide what they want to do. I like to see green candle closes like this. And it also looks like we're having a lot of indecision in the market if we take a look at these two past weekly candle closes. Now, taking a look at the daily chart over here, on the daily chart, we are in a consolidation range the last few days. It's between about $60,000 and about $63,000 here. I need to see a breakout of either 63 to be bullish or a breakdown of 59, 60,000 to feel a little bit bearish. This would just be short term bearish. And again, we do have support with the EMA 30 at about 58. However, one of the things I talked about is the bullish trend being broken as we're balancing perfectly on the EMA nine here, but we kind of broke below it, kiss the EMA 30. So right now I'm looking to the EMA 30 for another area of support. Either way, if we continue to dip, I will be looking for a long entry. I'm not really interested in buying Bitcoin at these current prices because I do have some. However, I do think dollar cost averaging is never a bad thing. So again, to kind of reiterate what I am seeing with the market, I'm just looking for a breakout here above 63 or a breakdown below $60,000 with Bitcoin. 
This next story is dope, and this is why I'm very, very bullish on Solana-based NFTs. Yes, I know that Solana NFTs and other NFTs, including Ethereum, they're going through a little bit of a bear cycle right now, but that is okay. Just make sure you're practicing risk management with this stuff, and you're playing these very, very carefully, just like you would with altcoins. But Solana NFTs are now on the FTX app, and it is going to make a lot easier for folks to go ahead and trade and invest in NFTs. The one thing I like about Solana NFTs is the fees. They're very affordable, and I'm 100% here for affordability and convenience. This next story is kind of hilarious. So Robinhood and Burger King are giving away Dogecoin, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. We all know that Burger King, they troll on the internet so much. It's hilarious. And plus this guy is absolutely hilarious. But apparently if you spend $5 at Burger King, guarantees you a Dogecoin until November 21st. There are also 20 Bitcoin and 200 Ethereans up for grabs. I do not like Burger King. I will not eat at Burger King. However, I think that this is hilarious. Big shout out here to One Inch Network. If you guys do not use One Inch to trade all of your DeFi DGen plays, I highly recommend you take a look. They allow you to use Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, Arbitrum, which I like to be able to use different chains. But they went ahead and released their Ethereum Burned Weekly Update. One Inch now takes ninth place in the top 10 of the Ethereum Burn leaderboard. Ethereum Burn over the last seven days is 8.8 .8 million, which is 2,101.20 Ethereum. And the total amount of Ethereum they burned is 35.7 million, which is 9,800 in Ethereum. That's a lot. Now we're going to talk about all of the different rug pulls that occurred this weekend. The first one was a low cap S coin squid game cryptocurrency scammers make off with $2.1 million. This is a picture of the chart and there's a video that actually shows a guy that got rugged live on air or wherever he was streaming. Um, this is absolutely sad that it happens. It's I don't like, like, I don't understand why these companies have to rug, why they have to run off and steal money. You can literally track all these blockchain transactions. It's absolutely insane. Either way, you guys, this is just a reminder. If you are invested in anything risky, always expect that this is going to be the scenario. Never just toss in a bunch of money. Make sure to watch this stuff and understand what it does. This next drama that happened over the weekend was Binance, and it's actually occurring today. They have temporarily disabled all crypto withdrawals on Binance.com due to a large backlog. Rest assured, our team is working on it with top priority. Thank you for your patience and apologies for any inconvenience caused. This was about, this was at 4.37 a.m. PT. Then about four hours ago, um, crypto withdrawals have been resumed. And then right after that, crypto withdrawals have been closed again. I have no issue against Binance. I, they just have done a lot of shady stuff in the past. So if you guys are going to use Binance, just make sure to be careful. And let's talk about this last rug pull that was just terrible. This rug pull over here was done by Anumis Dow and investors lose 60 million and it was 100% a rug pull. So basically Anubis Dow was marketed as a fork of Olympus Dow and it was supposed to be another canine themed cryptocurrency, this time represented by the Egyptian deity Anubis. One Twitter user linked the address that received the stolen funds to a Twitter account named Baruis. So basically you guys, this is what I was talking about. You are going to get caught if you rug pull and you scam people, don't do it. But at the same time, be very, very, very careful when investing in this type of stuff. And any time you're going to go stake, farm, pool, make sure you're using a moon bag because Cream Finance also got hit. I love and support you guys. Just please stay safe out there. This next segment is sponsored by Revenue Coin. Let's take a moment to explain what Revenue Coin is and different parts of their ecosystem. Revenue Coin is one of the world's first revenue tokens. Revenue Coin RVC holders fund high tech companies to scale. Startups receive funding, allocate up to 10% of revenues to the systematic purchase of RVC from the market, reducing supply and increasing value. So, this allows outside folks, anyone from anywhere, to go ahead and invest in different startups. And then with those companies will go ahead and take a specific amount of the revenue and invest it back into the original investors. And this is done with reducing supply of the revenue coin. Now let's talk about some of the benefits for RVC holders. The first benefit is exchangeability. Revenue coin will be listed on major cryptocurrency exchanges, guaranteeing its exchangeability with other currencies on these exchanges. This is great news. We always like to look for projects that have ambitions to be listed on top centralized exchanges. However, because revenue coin is a ERC20 token, you can get it on a DEX, but a centralized exchange listing would make it a lot easier to invest in and trade. 
Next aspect is gonna be hidden products. Only revenue coin holders will be able to access special offers of new products, unique configurations, or the price offers of existing products. So basically holders are going to get benefits. As always, you guys, I like this aspect of different cryptocurrencies, but I always, always recommend creating a moon bag just so you can mitigate risk. Third is going to be voting rights. Revenue coin holders have a say in making decisions as to which sub subsequent prospective project will receive funding from revenue capital. So you basically get to vote in what revenue capital invests in. It's kind of like a DAO or governance. Next is going to be liquidity. Revenue coin will be tradable on both centralized and decentralized exchanges. This is good. We want to see an asset traded on both centralized and decentralized exchanges. Last is going to be payment function. Revenue coin will exist as an internal means of payment within the revenue capital ecosystem.